Okay, I'm gonna do a really quick video basically to show you how to rewire a uh, three-phase motor to take, um, to basically alter the, uh, the input voltage. Um, so most of these three-phase motors, you can wire them either from 2A to 230 volts, which would be something that you get in residential, um, to um, 460 volts. Um, that would be something that you'd see like in a, in a large factory. Um, this is a three-phase motor. You can use a variable frequency drive to, uh, to run it. You basically convert your t uh, single phase 220 uh, through a uh, variable frequency drive to, um, to make it so that it, it uh, transforms it to three phase and uh, it'll push the motor. So what happened is I bought this uh, power medic drill press here. Um, it was wired up at the factory, the 460 volts. This is three phase. Uh, so it's three phase right here. Amps, all that jazz. Uh, also, I don't know if this came with it or not, but basically it was either upfitted or um, came from the factory uh, with this um, Delta variable frequency drive. Um, the expected input voltage for this is 400 uh, volts. Uh, here in my garage, I have 220 and 110 single phase available. Um, so, a lot of these can accept um, 220 or f like 460 and then uh, basically you'll take you could take single phase in here or three phase and convert whatever machine it is to variable frequency so you can bas basically control the uh, the speed at the motor instead of using stepper pulleys or whatever uh, so long story short um, so this is the, how the motor was uh, Wired up, I have everything was inside this box here and it was this little nameplate over it. Okay, each one of these wires is labeled with a number. Um, so I'm just gonna show you an example real quick, but we're gonna look for the seven or the four and those should be uh, nutted together. Okay, so this yellow one here, it's got a number four on it. Let me see if I can show you. Okay, you can see that four right there. And then the seven is this red wire and that is shown right here. Uh, so that kind of validates, let me just double check, yeah. So if you look at this here, that validates. And in this configuration, the four and the seven are on different circuits. So that validates that this thing is wired for high voltage or the 460 volt configuration. And then we're going to turn it down to um, 220. Now keep in mind, this is still three phase. So you can't just plug it directly into your... Um, 220 voltage in your house unless you have three phase wired most likely you're a single phase if you're residential so this is the way it's wired right now like the six is b nutted to the nine the five is b nutted to the eight the four to the seven and then there's the um three the two blocked off uh and then for the low voltage option you'd basically take the six the five the four and wire those together the nine the three the eight to the two and the seven to the one so I'm not going to do this on film, but what I'm going to do is rewire this so that the wiring situation matches uh, the diagram. And then I'm going to, uh, like I said, I can't get this variable frequency drive to work because it expects three phase input. And so I have a different var variable frequency drive that I have connected to another machine that I'm going to use just to test this unit. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and First of all, I'll complete the wiring on the motor to step it down to 240. And then I'm going to, so then I'll, I'll pop back in and show you that. And then um, I'll go ahead and, I think I'm just gonna disconnect this here and just run the motor directly. There's some other things that they have hooked up. Uh, they have like a, here, let me see. So this is a forward and a reverse switch. So this uh, black and uh, white wire here corresponds to, okay, so here's the switch. So this is a forward and reverse switch. And then there's an emergency power off switch here. Um, you can see in the back of this that the white wire is running to the, to the switch here and the black wire is running to the switch here. Um, and then also, uh, they're using this controller here, but they don't really use it the way that it was wired at the factory. Um, what they do is they send a 
through this circuit right here. Um, so these three here. So there's a, a 10 uh, a 10 volt um, signal that they send. And then the ACM and AVI, I don't know which is which, but one of these senses the return signal. And so what happens is you put this yellow 10 volt signal. It basically goes up into this. I imagine there's some kind of variable capacitor in here, or I don't even know what you call, variable capacitor. I think that's what it is. So when you turn this, it basically, um, you have a voltage drop after it. So it at 10, so if you send a 10 volt signal to this, at 10, at all the way, 100% max, you're gonna get a 10 volt signal back. At zero, you're gonna get zero back, and at 50, theoretically, you're gonna get, or 50% power, you're gonna get like five volts back. Theoretically, it'll probably be like a little error in there, but um, I guess the point is, they've changed the way this is wired so that, uh, so that they send this fake 10 volt signal, I, I, oh, I shouldn't say fake, but they create a 10 volt signal, to run through this and then um, basically it returns back to the controller and then thereby controls the uh, the frequency speed or the um, yeah so the motor speed on uh, on your variable frequency drive so it's kind of a remote way of uh, setting this up so it kind of operates the way that it was it came out of the factory um, you can also I believe probably toggle these up and down and control the speed that way um, also you can start and stop here but I think uh, this came out of a industrial factory and my guess is OSHA requires like a emergency stop button right there in the front of it um, they're more than likely they're doing tapping and stuff like that. So you forward and reverse. You could do it on this little cinder here, but if you have some mechanic uh, screwing around with this remote all the time, eventually it'll probably get damaged. Also, it's more convenient to have the uh, have the little remote switch right here, so the user doesn't have to screw around with something around the corner to get it to work. Anyway, let me do that wiring, and then I'll fade back in. Okay, so like I said. Um, I want the one and the seven to be wired together. That's this guy right here. So you have the the first hot wire wired in with the number one wire, which is a blue one and the seven. Uh, the second part of the circuit is the the two and the eight. Um, so that's this guy here. This red one. And here's the two. Here's the eight. And then the third one is the nine and the three. Okay, so you got a number nine and a number three in with the black one. And then these three get wired together. They were previously um, wired with the, the wires. I just disconnected and connected into the hot wires. So I'm gonna close all this up. I have two B nuts left because I eliminated two circuits. And then I'm gonna put this back on here and I'm gonna hook it up to the VCD that's right over there. Okay, really what I'm doing is, uh, since I can't use this variable control driver here, um, I wanna make sure this motor works before I sink any more money into uh, buying a new um, variable frequency controller. So what I did was I disconnected the three hot wires in here that go to the motor, so I'm kind of bypassing all these other functions. And then uh, I have this variable frequency controller here, the Teco FM50, which I'm pretty happy with. I did another video on driving this um, sander, but all I did was I took uh, these leads, I'm trying not to touch them, and then uh, disconnected the sander, plugged it in, and I'm just testing to see if it'll work. And I'm gonna start it now at 17.9 hertz. Uh, I guess full power is at 60, so we'll just try it. All right, I'm gonna punch the button. She's gonna spool up. 17.9, that was it. Now I'm gonna increase the speed. So we get the full power. I'm at 25, 30, 40, 50. 50 hertz right there. Very quiet. Anyway, uh, that's all I really wanted to show is how to do this wiring. I've already done a video on um, 
how to do this before for this machine, but I want to give another example. Uh, it's pretty straightforward and easy. A lot of times you'll find these old machines, uh, and they're actually better than the stuff you could buy today and probably a little cheaper made in the United States right there. Um, all these old machines, you can see there's quality in these components that you're just not going to find on uh, in like a new machine. Powermatic doesn't even make one like this anymore. So. Uh, and then the ones you do find, they'll be made in Taiwan. Um, nothing wrong with that. Really, it's just the amount of uh, steel and the quality uh, and the new ones just aren't there. So uh, I just wanted to show how easy this is. And um, anyway, if you want to try it, I'd recommend it.